Hey, this is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I go about coming up with my creations. I get that question asked a lot, and I know when I teach uh, my classes, that's one thing that they say over and over. I don't know how to come up with the ideas. Well, sometimes I just tell them, go look at the beads, kind of dig around, see if what catches your sight, pick that up, and then just lay it out. Now, one thing that does help is to lay it out and see what it looks like. And a beading board is the best way to do this. Now, if you don't want to go and spend money on a bead board, I recommend getting something like maybe um, a kitchen towel that doesn't have a whole lot of... Um, uh, print and stuff on it, something that's just plain, or I've gotten uh, felt squares for my classes and we do that. But this is actually the best and they're pretty inexpensive. This one particular here is for necklaces. As you see, it's got measurements in one inch increments out here. It's got three different grooves so you could actually make like a, a three chain um, necklace place for your beads. They also have uh, bead boards for your bracelets or for uh, anklets. Be careful not to drop them though. They're really, they're made out of a plastic thing and Klutz here dropped it just a second ago and I busted it. I'm not too happy about that. I'll put them back here so I don't drop them on the floor again. But anyway, so once you get something to lay your beads out where they're not going to roll around all over creation, usually what I do is just, I kind of um, think about what I have. I have all kinds of beads and I've got them in glass jars so I can see what I have. Um, sometimes maybe a picture will inspire me. I have actually done a couple of... Um, challenges where somebody has taken a picture and the colors are what is supposed to inspire and the this bracelet or there are three bracelets here are actually one of the challenges that I had it was a color challenge and it was um, greens and golds and yellows and all and I just made this out of um, guitar old guitar strings put some shells and the different color beads on it. This is made out of sari ribbon and you have a set there. I would have never have thought to put these colors together, but I think they work quite well. So, you know, look at nature for inspiration. Uh, another challenge that I had one time was mainly um, pinks and I, I like to put together different stones and sometimes I'll kind of mix them up but lately I've liked the look and I've been doing this for quite some time now I like the look of putting the same type of beads together it makes the piece look a little bit more dramatic and so you can see some of the beads a little bit better here are some of my paper beads here's a wire bead I've got some um, turtle beads, some crystals, these are war rose quartz and then aurora borealis gray in between, some gray, um, let's see if I can get this to focus a little bit better, I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, these are gray glass beads and then butterscotch glass beads. I actually uh, blogged about this and I'll put a link about the blog for this one, better pictures, and then the blog I did for the bracelets. In a couple of months, I'm actually going to be heading out um, to Colorado. My mom graduated from high school 60 years ago, and I'm going with her to her class reunion. And I'm planning on making something for a silent auction that they're going to have. And um, so I've been trying to think of some inspiration and what what to make well one thing is Colorado and these people are huge Denver Bronco fans so I think what I'm going to do is make uh, a Christmas ornament with Bronco colors and then I got to thinking you know what might be fun is to take their school colors they were Hornets and I think they were Hornets and their colors were green and gold and so I'm gonna make a Christmas ornament out of the guitar strings 
um, with those colors. So there'll be two different Christmas ornaments. And I'll probably show those. In fact, hang on one second. Here's an example of some of my Christmas ornaments. This one I actually made for somebody as a gift to give to somebody else. Um, they wanted something that was kind of representation of Louisiana. So I made that for them. Um, the other thing I want to make for um, this group of um, alumni is a necklace. And since they're in the Southwest, I'm thinking they're probably not going to be uh, the beachy boho fan that I am. And um, so I'm going to kind of make it a Southwest look. I have this pendant. Um, it's a butterfly with, this right here is not real stone, but it's supposed to look like halite, which is very Southwest. And I thought, you know what? I have gray pearls. And I thought the gray pearls would look really well. Oops. So basically you just have to go through with what you've got and just kind of start putting things together. And I might put some turquoise in with this. I don't know. Stay tuned because I'll show you what, what I come up with on a later date. Anyway, you know, when you're creating, just kind of think about who you're making your item for and what type of thing they may like. Go out, look at nature. Um, think about the things that maybe you have in stock and just start putting things together. And eventually you'll come up with a piece that you know either you'll like or the person you're making it for will like. Well, that's it for today. This is the Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.